Without 
religions in this world um, and they are so different and uh, they're um, they have their own unique stories their their unique theologies but they have one thing in common uh, which is a belief that our men are saved from judgment by their own good works and this is essence of religion human work human efforts are the main factor for their salvation the standard of good might be uh, different, uh, but all of them teach that uh, man saves himself in this life or the next life by his own good works, good deeds. But Christian is very different from that. We are opposite. In order for us to be saved, there is no human works, there's no human effort as involved. We do not contribute anything, nothing at all, absolutely nothing. We are saved 100%, saved by the grace of God. The major theme of Galatians is that no man is ever justified by his own uh, good work. And Paul uses this word justified over and over again, and not just in the book of Galatians, but uh, it's, it's a very common word in the book of Romans as well. Justification. This is a legal term. If you are justified, that means you are not guilty anymore. If you are not guilty, you won't have condemnation. You won't be condemned. Justification in Greek word, it's called dikaios. Dikaios. It means to declare righteous or to hold someone guiltless. God declares we are sinless. God declares we are guiltless. We, de we declare that on the basis of what Jesus has done on the cross. It's not based on what we have done, but it's based on the thing Jesus Christ done on the cross. Because of what Jesus Christ has done, we take on His righteousness, and God look at us righteous, holy, spotless, blameless, sinless. So when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, God grants us that justification, the salvation through Jesus Christ. It is what we earn, it is what God gives us as a gift. Gift is given to us graciously and freely through Jesus Christ. And Paul keep on emphasizing this, this doctrine of grace over and over and over again throughout this Galatian. Why? Because he knows that this is so important. If we misunderstand this doctrine of grace, we miss out everything else. We don't get this. The Christianity is about grace. We don't get this. We lose everything. We miss everything. Last week, uh, in chapter 3, Paul talked about grace. Today's passage in chapter 4, Paul again talks about grace. But this time, he used this grace in different angle. He uses different illustration. The key word for today's passage is sonship. And Paul is offering this choice. Do you want to be a slave or do you want to be son? Do you want to be the slave of the law or do you want to be son of God? And he is actually offering uh, this choice to people in Galatia. And his analogy is that son who is underaged is like person under the law. And the mature son is like a person under grace. 
Underage people will be treated as children. Underage people will be treated like almost like slaves. They don't have a legal right. They don't have legal uh, privilege for them. Verse 2 goes this, The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. The family will assign guardians and trustees, the private teacher, a private instructor to take care of these underaged children. As long as the children are children, underaged, they are no different than any other slaves. He takes order from guardians and trust his to instructor, just like other slaves. But when children became mature, he's no longer under the authority, no longer of, under the power of the guardians and trustees. And the children, the mature child, become adult, he will go over the laws of the guardians and the instructor, the trustees. And he will be the, the master over them. He will be like father. Verse uh, 3 says this. So also when we were underage, we were in slavery under the elementary uh, spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adop adoption to sonship. So we were under the law. We were servants. We were slaves. We were in the bondage under the elemental spiritual forces of this world. Just until that appointed time. God's appointed time. And as we were going through Mark, we talked about this Kairos, this appointed time. God has that plan in us. And when that time comes, everything becomes different. See, expiration date of the old law is gone. It's, 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 not, it's not there anymore. We don't have any obligation to follow, keep the laws in us. When the time of Christ is, is here with us, we don't have to follow the old laws anymore. See, before Christ came into this world, in the Old Testament time, Jews were under this bondage of law, this mosaic laws they had. So they were under, they were like underaged children. They were like slaves. They did have this potential inheritance, but they were not mature enough to inherit this. They were still under the bondage of the law. Now, for the Jews, they had this very strict bondage. You know, I mean, they were really tied up. They were really tied up with these laws. You know, God gave them the law for what? It was revealed. It was to reveal the sin. It was, it was purpose for the law that they had is so they can drive them closer to God. But instead, they thought, that the law was going to save them. The law itself will redeem them. So what they did was they added more laws, more regulations. They come up with 613 laws for themselves. And they wanted to be more sacred. They're more religious. They wanted to be more, more holy, pious, more godly. And, and that's, why they, you know, that, that, that's what they were thinking. That's, that's what they were going to do. They thought... This is the way to be more, I mean, closer to God. Do more things. Keep more laws. Make more rules. And live by these rules and regulations. And we will make us closer to God. You know, God gave them a love for a good purpose. But man twisted it. And it became slave under that law. And that is a tragedy. And even nowadays, we see a lot of people tying themselves with these old laws and traditions and regulations. They focus on working too much for God. It's great, but it has to come as a result, as a fruit. 
But you know, thinking that, oh, if I work this, if I do this, I will be granted. I will be, I will be closer to God. And that is very, very it's far from the gospel message. There are still a lot of people living under that system, the law. You know, we are having Christmas. And we are celebrating Christmas. And what is the reason for this uh, season? The birth of Christ, we're celebrating it. Jesus Christ, His birthday, He came down onto this world. He lived as you and me, like He had this flash. The God Himself stepped down of this eternity and lived among us, reincarnated as a human being. For what? There's a reason for it. There's a purpose for it. You know, Jesus Christ, He was the inheritance. He was the hidden, uh, the secret inheritance that we had. He came to set us free from this old bondage, the laws. And because of Jesus Christ, we can have this sonship. And that is the inheritance that we're supposed to have as Christian, as a believer in Christ. Verse 4, but when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Look at the verse 5, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. We are adopted. We're, we're adopted sons. We receive this adoption to sonship, we became the sons of God through Jesus Christ. But how can we prove it? How can you prove that you are adopted sons? How can we prove that we are, yes, I guarantee that, yes, I am son of God. I'm adopted, I'm connected. How can you prove that? How can you guarantee that? Of course, we have the Word of God. We have the New Testament. And we have all this evidence and this written documents. Yes, Gospel of Jesus Christ. But is there any other proof that we have? Is there any evidence that we have? But if you look at this, verse 5, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. 6, because you are His sons, God sent Spirit of His Son into our hearts. The Spirit who calls out Abba, Father. And that is a def defined, a proof, evidence that confirming that we are adopted sons in Christ. The Spirit of God's Son living in our heart. And sometimes we are not really sure that we are belonging to God. Sometimes we are very insecure about the sonship in Christ. But look at verse 6. God sent the Spirit of His Son in our hearts. The Holy Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. The Spirit of His Son. The Holy Spirit. And giving us that a proof. Giving us that confirmation. Because you are Son, I give you the Spirit of His Son. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, enters into our body enters into our system and testifies the sonship is true. And son, the, the Spirit witness that we are belonging to the kingdom of God. We are belonging to the family of God. Witnessing how? By giving us that cry, Abba, Father. You know Abba means, right? Abba means it's Daddy, Papa in Aramaic. And Jesus used to say that all the time when He was praying, right? Abba, Father. That's really intimate, very tender a term. Because of Christ, we can have this very intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Very intimate relationship with our God the Father. That we can even call Him Abba, Daddy, Papa. And this is amazing. I mean, as Asians, the Koreans, 
we don't call our dad like I like I don't never call my dad like Appa. I use I call it Aboji. We have this very uh, Confucianism influence over us. It's really hard for us to call our dad in, in this tender term, Daddy, Papa. We, we do not encourage people to uh, call a father that way. But this is incredible. Jewish context is the same as, as that. Like, they have very strict rules and regulations, and they have that etiquette. They have to. They supposed to have a respect for their parents, especially father is is a ruler of the household. But because of Jesus Christ, we can call God the Father, Daddy, Papa. It is privilege. Sonship is confirmed by Spirit of the Son, the Holy Spirit, that living in us, dwelling in us. If we didn't have a, uh, the Spirit of God, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit living in us, there's no guarantee. There's no proof. It's really hard for us to know that we are sons of God. But the Spirit is, is, is giving me that, giving us that the confirmation. So if you look at this, there's a huge difference between the sonship and the old law. You know, person, the people who are living under the law, the Jews in the Old Testament, what they were, to, uh, what they were trying to do is, is doing things in outside, the exterior things they had, exterior laws and rules and regulations, and they satisfy them. They're doing it right. They seem to be doing the, the right things exteriorly. Outside was, was good. They were doing it. Keeping the laws and obeying the laws, and they're they're living in, in a very righteous life outside. But they what they couldn't do is they couldn't really change the inside. The interior being cannot be changed. Their heart and their attitude they could not change by keeping the laws, and that was a problem. They were doing the right thing outside, but they were not doing the right thing inside. They were worshiping God outside. They are loving people outside, but inside of them, the attitude, their heart was far from the right thing, the righteousness of God. They had to do it. They had to come to the synagogue, and they had to come to go to a temple, and they had to do their duties. Not anymore, guys. We don't, we don't just come to church because you, you guys have to. You don't just do, do your offering because you have to. You don't go to mission field because you have to. It's not that. We do it because we want to do it. Because the Spirit of God is working in us and giving us that freedom in us. We gather and worship God because we want to. Our, cha- our attitude and our inner being changes because of that Jesus Christ and because of His Spirit living in us, actively convincing us, guiding us through. Spirit penetrates the heart and transforms it. And we experience that transformation happening in our life. If we believe in Jesus Christ, and if we really have Holy Spirit living in our life, in in our heart, it is necessary for us to see the changes and transformation in us. The way we worship God, the way that we interact with other people, the way we work and the way we serve others, the way we talk and the way we live has to be different. The way we study has to be different. We're not just doing the good work, guys. We're not just doing the worship outside. We are doing it from the inside. And the change needs to be there. In verse 8, it says, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. Well, the Galatians, they already heard the gospel of Jesus Christ through Apostle Paul. They were already set free. They experienced the freedom in Christ. They accepted Christ and they became sons. You know what? What they were trying to do, they're going backward. They're, they're going back to the old ways, old laws, 
turn their sonship into slavery. And Paul is furious about this. He's disgusted. This is not right. So upset hearing this. And he says, verse 9, But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? And in referencing it, weak and miserable forces, the old law, all the religious system you had, this is a weak and miserable forces. Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? See, you have Christ. You are now belonging to the family of Christ you are sons in Christ, but you're going back? This is terrible. This is misery. Brothers and sisters, you know, if you have been trying so hard to earn the favor of God by doing something, you are under the law, you are slaves, you are underage. If you accept Jesus Christ in your heart and if Holy Spirit living in us, and if we really acknowledge Jesus Christ as a gift of, of God, we can claim that right as a son of God. Adopt his sons. Remember that. You're sons. Not slave. You are precious son. In his eyes. This is amazing grace.